I made a multiplayer game in one week. It's called Souls of the Grumps and it has the unique mechanic that you can teleport back to your previous position while keeping your current momentum. So you can do cool stuff like this. And this. I made it for the Brackies Game Jam 2020.2 where the theme was Rewind. Here's how I made it. I actually started this jam a day late since I didn't even know what was going on until someone on my Discord server told me about it. Thankfully, I still had six more days, but then I blew two of them on stupid ideas that didn't work. They were both multiplayer combat games where you had to work with your previous lives to kill your opponent. I realized that the scope of these games was way too large for the time span though, and started working on a puzzle platformer instead. During this process, I realized that I hate 2D game development and I'm never doing it again, so I scrapped the whole 2D project and made a new one in 3D. Every puzzle game needs buttons, so I made one of those and slapped it into my game. Then I spent the next 4 hours coding a robust interaction system that I only ended up using a quarter of in the final game. The cubes were getting a little boring to look at, so I modeled and textured some player art. I decided to try out a gradient texture style, which I've been meaning to experiment with in the past, but never got around to doing. It turned out way better than I expected. I realized I would need two separate player models since it was a two-player multiplayer game. So I made a second purple one, and this one was grumpy. I added the art into the game and added some height-based gradient shaders onto the walls and floors. I also added some particles for when the players moved around. I experimented with an outline image effect and added a finish line so that you could complete the level. Since your partner in the game was completely random, I needed a way for the players to be able to communicate with each other, so I added in emotes. Then I made a main menu. But all of my progress came to a screeching halt when I encountered this ridiculous error that prevented me from changing anything in my menu. I spent hours scouring year old forum posts about ways to fix it, but none of them worked. I made a new project and imported my old files in an attempt to escape the error, but this just caused even more to pop up. And the worst part of it all was that even after I had fixed those errors, it still hadn't fixed the main error that I was trying to get away from in the first place. So all of this was for nothing. So I deleted all the project folders I didn't think I needed. But guess what? I did need them, and it created a billion more errors that I had to resolve. At this point, I was halfway through the jam, and I was worried I wasn't going to finish it all. Until finally, I decided to just search through every script in my scene and find out what the problem was. And I found it. It turns out that I was just loading the menu after the player had left the multiplayer session, and stopping the game counted as leaving a multiplayer session, reloading the main menu after the game had ended, causing the error. Which is beyond stupid, but that's how Unity works, I guess. Now I could finally get back to working on the game. I had finished all the main mechanics, moving, jumping, and the soul reuniting mechanic, where you could press space to leave your soul behind, and then space again to teleport back to it. This was the game's main puzzle mechanic, and made for some interesting level designs. On the first level the mechanic is introduced, one of the players must hold down the button so that the other can pass through the door. But there's a problem. Once you go down the pit to where the button is, there's no way to get back out. This puzzle acts as a simple tutorial on how to use the soul reuniting mechanic. The solution is to put your soul down before you press the button, and then wait for your teammate to press the button on the other side. Then you can reunite with your soul and jump over. This mechanic also acted as the game's tie to the theme Rewind. The next level teaches another use for the soul reuniting mechanic, something I like to call the soul jump. You can jump much higher than normal if you put your soul midair, and then jump and immediately switch to it, keeping your current momentum. But during actual playtesting, this mechanic proved insanely hard to replicate, because it required almost perfect timing between jumping and teleporting back to your soul. As a result of this though, I was worried I would have to cut my favorite skill-based mechanic completely. But after a lot of discussion with my playtesters, I came up with a solution that I thought would work. I would store the last time the user pressed the jump button, and then when you reunited with your soul, if you had pressed it less than a fifth of a second ago, it would apply the same force that you would normally have if you jumped. I also made it so that you could jump after you teleported, with a little bit of time delay on that too. And this just made the jumping range a lot more lenient, so you didn't have to press the button at the exact correct time to get the perfect jump. And after playtesting with some players online instead of in the same room, it turned out that the emote mechanic wasn't really enough for communication. Excuse me, excuse me, I need you on the button. I need you on the button, please. Partner? Partner? And while I can't necessarily solve the problem of bad teammates, I can make it easier for them to communicate. 
I spent a while making a chat system which paid off big time in the long run. I don't know how I expected players to be able to communicate with each other with only 4 emotes, but the chat system made everything so much easier. At this point the game was pretty much done, except for most of the levels, so I came up with a story and made it into a trailer. I also spent a while on the itch page. I added in some sound effects. A few are from a sound bundle I bought a while ago. One is from freesound.org, and some I made myself. Then my friend Helix from my Discord server composed some awesome soundtracks for the game and trailer. I reserved the last two days of the jam for puzzle design. But it turned out designing puzzles around a unique mechanic was way harder than I thought. Most of the ideas for levels actually came while I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep, which was actually pretty annoying because I had to get up and write them down. But I think the main reason all the levels work so well is because I spent an insane amount of time with playtesters on them, making sure that they were fun and not too difficult. This took up so much time that I only really had enough for about 10 levels, but I think it was worth it because all of them are really fun to play. The game ended up getting 27th in the fun category, which was pretty cool. Anyway, if you want to play the finished game, there's a link in the description. I'd love to see you guys try it out. If you want to see what I'm doing in between videos, or just want to talk to other game devs, join my Discord server with the link in the description. I'm currently working on a custom game launcher and updater for all of my games, so if you want to follow any progress on that, make sure to join. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, and I'll see you all next time.